Cheers and welcome to SOV and Beers. I'm your host Tony from SOVHorror.com. Uh, today we're having some uh, Paps Blue Ribbon and we're going to be taking a look at the Rudy Belafonte shot on video disaster piece called Death O Lantern. So a little bit of background as we like to do on this show. Uh, Death of Lantern is actually made by a filmmaker named Chris Seaver. Um, Chris Seaver started as a young teenager making shot on video movies and he actually hooked up with uh, Todd Jason Falcon Cook uh, who ran Cemetery Cinema, best known probably for making the film Evil Night and Death Metal Zombies. And uh, so Todd Cook was distributing some of his early movies, uh, titles like Bloody Bobby and The Meter Maid. And then some years passed and uh, Chris started this new label called Low Budget Pictures. And Low Budget Pictures, if you haven't seen any Low Budget Pictures, I actually have, these are all Chris Seaver DVDs over here. So to say I'm a fan is probably an understatement. But um, Low Budget Pictures, for people not familiar with it, it's kind of stuff more in the vein of like trauma. So it's kind of crass, low budget humor, lots of references, uh, you know, to horror films and 80s nostalgia, stuff like that. And the first time I saw a Chris Seaver movie was actually as a bonus feature on this film right here, Hell Asylum, which is a full moon movie that was produced by uh, J.R. Bookwalter. You can maybe see on the back there, there's a tiny picture there. And one of the bonus features was a sh uh, short Chris Seaver film called Mulva Zombie Ass Kicker. And here's the regular DVD release of that right here. And uh, Mulva Zombie Ass Kicker is actually relevant to what we're talking about today too because it's also another Halloween SOV. There's not a lot of Halloween SOVs guys, there's only a few out there and uh, Mulva is one of the few that's probably the most positive thing I can say about that film. I love Chris's movies but honestly I was not a big fan of Mulva Zombie Ass Kicker. The main character is just kind of really annoying. Uh, the story pretty much centers around this uh, he she person named Mulva who uh, Wants to go trick-or-treating and get all this candy, but zombies have invaded the town. And, you know, there's some cool moments in it. There's a nice cameo by Lloyd Kaufman and Debbie Roshan in it. But honestly, I didn't care for that one too much. Um, but after that, Tempe and Full Moon put out Dead and Rotting. And on this one, we got Filthy McNasty, which was another Chris Seaver short. And I absolutely love Filthy McNasty. It's It's kind of that stereotypical cheesy story of the girls who want to be popular they want to be hot so what do they do they make a deal with a sex demon and next thing you know they're vixens and uh the body count starts piling up so filthy mcnasty i really love that one that one actually spawned quite a few sequels i think four i think there's five of them in total and uh really good series i highly recommend those but anyways we're here today to talk about death o lantern so Death of Lantern was one of the first uh, releases under Chris Seaver's label that he had started in, around uh, 2011 called Warlock Home Video. And the whole idea of Warlock Home Video was these fake lost shot on video movies. So Chris went out there with his cast and his crew, grabbed his old uh, VHS camera, and tried to make movies that were accurate depictions of old SOV movies. And they're all hosted by this guy called the Warlock. And the Warlock is great. The Warlock is so funny. It's pretty much a send-up of the horror host. It reminds me a lot, if you know those intros from the Brain Damage films. You know, Welcome Gore Hounds by Darren Ramage. It's very similar to that. So, they did quite a few releases. This is kind of just a stack of Warlock releases I have here. Um, mainly Chris Seaver films, but they also put out some stuff by Chris LaMartina, Joe Sherlock, and, and some other folks as well. So, it was a pretty cool label. Um, I personally really dig the Warlock stuff as well. So, uh, Death of Lantern. What's Death of Lantern about? So, Death of Lantern is pretty much about this killer pumpkin guy named, uh, Stingy Jack, who was this child killer, who, uh, pretty much got off by the townspeople for killing the kids 
And so he comes back many moons later to try to collect the soul of five kids so he can become human again. And the kids in this are played by mostly Chris Seaver regulars. Uh, one of the standouts to me in this film is uh, Clint Kelly, who you might know. Uh, he's a filmmaker in his own right, but uh, he he's also the person responsible for getting Sledgehammer on DVD. He had bought the rights from... Uh, David A. Pryor. And so, you know, I'm tipping my hat right now to you, Clint. Thank you so much for getting Sledgehammer out there. And uh, Clint plays a typical 80s dude in this. Him and, and this other guy, they're constantly high-fiving each other like every two seconds. And that just cracked me up. I, I find that uh, character, those characters very funny. And so, as far as, like I said, it's it's trying to be an old school SOV. So they did try to s stick to, it's a lot of 80s tropes. It's a lot of uh, references to 80s movies. And the kids that are actually uh, trying to protect themselves and take out uh, Stingy Jack are actually kind of almost based off of the Monster Squad. It reminds me of the Monster Squad a lot. It's pretty much a horror club. This horror club of kids who hang out at this movie theater and they're always watching movies. And just like in Monster Squad, they gotta get the badass character to come help them and join them to take out Stingy Jack. It's cheesy. It's fun. Uh, there's some neat little uh, gore effects. I mean, they're very cheap. They're very cheesy. The best one, in my opinion, is, is one of the first kills where uh, Stingy Jack puts a, a candlestick through a guy's eye and the candle's lit which I thought was really cool, really effective. And, uh, you know, I, I really dig these Warlock releases. Uh, this one in particular, Defo Lantern. Uh, I like it because, you know, it is kind of showing love for the shot on video movies. And, you know, it's not really making in fun of them. You know, it kind of has some fun with the genre. But, you know, it's played straight. If you're used to Chris Seaver's stuff and you've seen some of his other movies and maybe you didn't care for them... You know, his movies aren't for everyone. They're very crass. There's lots of uh, crass humor and stuff like that, which I know a lot of people can't get into. Th this one is a lot less crass. He he's kind of subdued his style for this, you know, directing under the pseudonym Rudy Belafonte, which you also have to love. Uh, the movie's not very long. It's only about 45 minutes, and that is with the... Uh, host segments by the warlock but there is a cool little fake making of at the end of the movie where uh they're interviewing all the actors about working with director rudy belafonte which is kind of interesting it's kind of fun um so overall i highly recommend death o lantern i think it's a great one to watch this halloween for your halloween season you know you probably watched wnuf halloween special already you've been there you've done that you've watched trick-or-treat 20 times halloween 3 80 times Check out Death o Lantern. And I got to mention, there's also a sequel, guys. Death o Lantern 2. So anyways, that's it for uh, this episode, guys. Happy Halloween. Thanks for uh, watching the videos. Uh, you know, we're getting a lot of great love, and I really appreciate it. And uh, please be sure to go to SOVHorror.com. Check out some of our releases. We got a brand new release. It's just about to come out called The Spirit Gallery. It's a lost SOV from 1995. It's a great film, guys. I think you guys are going to love it. Anyways, uh, I just want to go out and say cheers to Chris Seaver. Cheers to Warlock Home Video. And cheers to SOV, guys. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time on SOV and Beers. Cheers.